Okay, how's it going guys? This is Rio Muratov, photographer based in Tokyo. So, I recently was able to get the Pentax 17, waited patiently for this time to come because it was actually released earlier this year actually. And when the first batch was sold, I w I'm not sure how many like copies were being sold, but it went out fast and I wasn't able to grab one. And you guys probably have guessed it, similar to graphics card in the PC industry. People basically bought it and resold it at ridiculous prices. And I basically waited to get the second batch or second stock when it was being sort of like produced. And I was basically able to grab it. And after like feeling, after unboxing it and after like, you know, seeing the functionalities of this camera, Instead of like making just one video on this topic, I thought I should make two videos in particular on this topic due to the fact that if I talk about the functionality of this camera in addition to that shooting with the shooting experience and talking about that, that would be a pretty long video. And while I was basically writing the script for this video, I realized that I have like six pages to talk about just on the overview so that's like this is basically going to be one of my longest videos talking about the Pentax 17 so I'm going to dedicate this overview type of video to you guys and a separate video on the topic of shooting so that shooting experience and how I felt while using this camera in particular and as always I have my script in my hand and my smartphone so hopefully I will cover as much as I can in this video so uh, I have to admit when I first really received my Pentax 17 uh, model number R8010 9031150 which is a really clean number I was actually surprised on the sort of like the feeling of or the t how it feels on the touch actually because I was predicting something like the Kodak M35 or the M38 if you guys use Kodak's like film half frame cameras those are 100% made out of like plastic like really plasticky plastic however because I paid a hefty price for the Pentax 17 I think I paid roughly $600 or so 550 or so in Japan it's like 79,000 yen so 8,000 yen which is like Oh, blew a hole in my wallet but I wasn't expecting much however I was wrong because uh, you guys probably have already seen uh, many people mentioning that the top plate is made out of like fine metal I'm not sure what kind of metal they use alloy and the bottom plate is metal all in addition to that the center area how should I say the lens itself and the what we call the middle and also the back plate is made out of plastic and also the grip itself is made out of plastic. However, because the top plate and the bottom plate is made out of metal, this really feels solid, but not too solid as a Nikon F3 that I currently use as my main 35mm. However, it like kind of sits in between a Nikon professional SLR in a more you know cheaper what you call plasticky camera that I've used in the past so what specifically caught my attention in terms of the overall and overall appearance of this camera is obviously the color scheme and like I said the top and bottom has a metal uh what you call alloy and the middle part is like plastic however the, the top and bottom the color scheme is more like a bronzish type of metal color. Uh, it's hard to explain across the video. Uh, this video, sticking some BTS for you guys, but this color scheme looks similar in a way to Ricoh's GR3's Diary Edition, if I'm right. When I went to the you know GR place, actually, that uh, or it might look t a little bit towards the Nikon's F2 titanium type kind of color scheme but it's like really hard to see across the you know the screen however the finish itself is unlike Konica C35's what I call matte silver aluminum finish this on the other hand has sort of like a sparkly effect and paper terminologies I guess semi gloss type of texture so depending on the lighting situation if you're shooting outside it might produce some kind of sparkle in some people's eyes but it's not too 
obvious, but it has this sort of like texture to the finish. And size wise, this is something I was really happy about is that it is really small in the hand and similar in terms of the Konica C35 that I sometimes use. I would say this will go into the compact camera categories. I was in, in my terminology, compact film camera size would be like the Konica C35, uh, Pentax's travel series, the and also the Olympus Pen type of mirrorless cameras and also the what we call film cameras. Rolei, uh, Rolei's uh, C35, uh, I would say that is an extreme example of a super compact camera, but unlike those types of camera, it's not too small, but it's not too big as a Nikon's SLR series. So this might fit in between the Nikon F3 and the Nikon EL series, or I guess the more like consumer oriented one. This might be a little bit smaller than the Nikon FM2 in my opinion. And at the same time, it is a lot lighter than a typical Nikon's like SLR. So yeah, that's actually a big bonus for me. Okay, so basic functionalities of this camera, I will try to go super quick because a lot of people already mentioned, covered everything on this topic. So the grip itself, which is on the right side, there is a screw there. You can basically unscrew it using a coin. You can access the battery compartment. And yes, this camera runs on batteries. You need to get CR2 batteries. And what was also caught me off guard was Pentax 17 actually has a battery, a spare battery actually, just one battery within the box. And when I opened it, it came with the batteries. And you guys probably know if you live in North America, I live in North America, Camp companies do not include batteries, but for some odd reason, Pentax included it for us. So that is great news to hear and see, which means that you can basically shoot your first roll and a couple rolls with that you know battery that is included in the box. And in most cases, if you're shooting in Japan, the majority of what we call film camera shops tend to have the CR2 batteries in store. So it's it's not like a super unusual type of battery. A lot of like cameras, film cameras that run on batteries use CR2 type. So in most cases, if you're, if you're shooting this in Japan, you won't have any problems accessing or purchasing that type of battery. One thing to note, the screw, like I said, the screw right here, you need to, a coin to sort of like unscrew this, but the problem, <laughs> because of this video is not being sponsored by Pentax or Rico at all, I can say whatever I want, but this is a sort of like another engineering flaw that I found is that this screw, it screws in tightly. However, when you remove this screw, it's super easy to lose due to the fact that when you sort of like untwist it and remove it, it comes long. It come, it, it drops to the floor and <laughs> I highly suggest never to remove the battery when you're like outside standing up because 100% you're gonna lose this screw it's gonna fall to the ground so I do not know why they did this method I mean I mean they could have made the screw a little bit longer or I don't know but the the height of the screw is like really narrow so it's like really easy to like fling out from this you know what I call like area on the battery grip and also though it's kind of a little bit hectic to like remove the battery grip and once you put in the or install the batteries you had to put this back in but I had a little bit of trouble like put it, locking it into one of the shafts in here and just twisting it around so that's one area to like mention so getting the battery installed a uh, quick run through of the top area of the Pentax 17. I will try to go as fast as I can. So on the left side of the dial, there's the ISO dial, which goes from 50 to 3200. So in most cases, you won't have any trouble like shooting with the Pentax 17, because in my case, I shoot with Gold 200. I shoot with Fujifilm's uh, 400 most of the time, and I overexpose by one stop. So if I'm shooting with Gold 200, I shoot I rate this at 100. If I shoot with Fujifilm's 
400 film stock, I rate this at 200, and the dial itself is already locked in, and there is a button on the left side of the viewfinder, on the top side, which you have to press, and then you can rotate. So when you release this, what we call button, it kind of sort of like locks into place, so it's not going to move at all. You won't have any trouble with that going anywhere. And on the right side of the ISO dial, there is an exposure compensation, which I never use, unfortunately. And exposure compensation, this will really depend on the person because, like I said, when I overexpose, I basically rate my film by one stop. So 400, I rate it at 200. If I'm shooting with, uh, I guess, 200 film, I rate it at 100, I won't have any issues. But there are those, and the reason why this exposure compensation exists is that there are specific type of films on the far end of the spectrum that still exist nowadays as of 2024. An example would be Cinestill 50D, which I have trouble scanning. Cinestill 50D, if you guys probably know, like I said, most people probably overexpose that film stock by one stop, but like I said, it starts at 50, so you first, I guess, if I have Cinestill 50D in here, I basically rate this at uh, 50. And then for the exposure compensation, I basically push, well, not push, but like rotate the dial to plus one, which means that the sensor will be sort of like, I guess, oversensitive in a way that it will in addition to the optimal exposure, it will make it a little bit brighter by one stop. So I guess this is like sort of like combination that you will use if you use something like a Cinestill 50D. But like I said, not many people will use Cinestill 850D in most cases. They will use something like Kodak Gold 200, uh, Color Plus, or Ultramax, or uh, Portra, I guess, if you have the money. <laughs> so yeah, I never use exposure compensation. In my case, actually, but on the other, I guess, end of the spectrum, there is, I guess, 3200 film stock. What was it? Ilford 3200 still exists, if I'm right. I don't shoot black and white, so I'm not sure if that is still being produced. But if you have Delta 3200 from Ilford, you can basically push it by one stop, or you can go the other way around, which you can basically decrease it by one stop. On the exposure, on the uh, com exposure compensation dial, so I never shoot that much with black and white, but that options are available. So really thoughtful for users who use either type of film. So on the top middle parts or section of the camera itself, we have the Pentax logo, really old logo, and the Pentax name itself, and also. Craftsmanship by Pentax, and also it says film camera at the bottom. No, duh, yeah. <laughs> and the viewfinder itself. And the viewfinder itself, you have to keep note that this half frame camera, which shoots 72 exposures instead of 32, 32, 36, is that every shot that you shoot horizontally like this will appear vertically. So I guess the engineers thought about this method because the majority of us are phone shooters phone shoot phone photos are vertical i guess people will have a better i guess use of shooting vertically instead of horizontally that we're used to shooting but majority cameras are or majority of film cameras that were like made in the past shoot horizontally so i'm used to shooting horizontally so it was a unique experience like shooting everything in vertical and if i want to shoot like horizontal i basically have to do this so if you're someone who likes to shoot horizontally most of the time you will have this weird sensation of okay i have to shoot horizontally like this instead of this so this was a rather a unique experience okay so from the right side of the viewfinder we have the mode dial and i'll go really quick we have the bulb mode so that's for nighttime photography you put this on a tripod you attach a cable release and when you really press the, sh the cable release the shutter opens and when you finish the exposure you basically release 
the button and it basically closes down the shutter so and below that we have the bokeh mode which is sort of like aperture priority but it basically opens the aperture to the widest valuation which is 3.5 and tries to blur out as much as it can and we have the night mode below that which is great for night and program auto is basically what I'm going to be using most of the time which is it shoots automatically without the flash I use the program uh, mode on the white uh, side and below that we have auto mode which basically shoots everything in auto and below that we have the yellow section yellow section means that the, the flash will fire and there's a program mode which basically automatically like meters and sort of like fires the flash at the optimum flash power and also we have the night mode and the flash mode and that's basically it in terms of the mode dial and on the top right we have the sort of like the on and off switch which feels really tactile and sharp and once you sort of like put it from off to on it, the sort of like focus mechanism you can basically hear it like make a sort of like a sound. I'm not sure if you guys can pick that sound up, but when I turn it on, it has it, the focusing sort of like moves a little bit or the elements, front elements of the lens. So that's rather nice in my opinion. And so on the top right, we have the, what I call the winder. And like I said, because this video is not being sponsored by Pentax 17 or Pentax Rico company, I can say what I want, but this is another engineering flaw that they should really fix is that because I shoot mostly with the Nikon F3, the Nikon F3, when the winder is like, when it's like sort of like closed, you can't press the shutter when it's in on mode. And when this Pentax something is in on mode and when this white call winder is like shut here, I'm used to like pressing the shutter on my Nikon F3 knowing that it won't fire but when i try to do that it actually fires and i basically lost an exposure so this is might be a design flaw but they should put some kind of like a what call stopper when it's in this what call collapsed like mode or i don't know what you would call when the winders like you know like sort of like closed in kind of so that is something that they should really fix on the second generation so it can prevent people from accidentally pressing the shutter when it's still in on. So and also the white call shutter sound. I mean, it sounds kind of similar to, what was it? The, what's the name of that camera that I used once but I kind of let it go. It was the, Zenza Bronicles RF, if you ever shot with that camera, the shutter sound it's as if it's dying. This has something similar to that. It's like, it's kind of, it's like a slow poke kind of. And when I first got this camera, I was like, is the shutter really working? You know, because the shutter is like so slow. I thought, wait. Is this going to be a, like a, a one second exposure kind of? So that's like one of the things that caught me off guard. But yeah. And obviously on the right side, there is a amount of exposures that you shot. But this is like, this is like one of the, I guess, disadvantage of shooting with half frame cameras is that you cannot pinpoint know what exposure you are on because the indexing is so tiny that I'm not sure it's in between 16 and 12 right now. I'm like, is this 14th exposure or 15th exposure kind of? So in most cases, I basically like forget and basically just shoot, 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 shoot until I can't wind it anymore. And I'm like, okay, I'm end of the roll. So remove it this is the focusing method and this is actually my first camera that uses zone focusing if you guys do not know zone focusing zone focusing is that there's a 
when we change the focusing, what we call wheel, it basically designates to a specific distance and you basically shoot according to that. But in most cases, you don't have a ruler. We don't have a measure tape measure, to, but you have to sort of like eyeball from your eyes that that subject is roughly what, how many centimeters, one meter, two meters. But for the Pentax 17 in particular, we have the flower on the far right, which is when you look at the bottom, it's roughly 25 centimeters. Uh, from the right, the second one is I like to eat food, which is for food, tabletop photography, 50 centimeters roughly. And when you go to the left, we have a single person like me, forever single, which is 1.2 meters. And on the left, we have two people. I'm in a deep relationship, uh, stay away. 1.7 meters, the distance just increased. <laughs> and on the left, we have two parent guided 18, above 18, hopefully, uh, parents with one child. That is like the declining population of Japan, probably. <laughs> but, or one child polished seats. <laughs> what am I saying? That's roughly three meters. And on the left, we have uh, two mountains. Hopefully, it's not Mount Fuji, but that is infinity. So in my case, I sh most of the time shoot with in that mountain mode, which is like infinity or somewhere in between 1 meter, 1.2 to 1.7 meters in most cases. So yeah, that is the mode dial of the Pentax 17. And sorry for the making these like clanging sound. I have the Peak Designs what I call uh, ladybugs attached to this so I can basically attach my camera strap if I want. Like so. But yeah, I'm not using it so let me take this off. Okay, so getting the what we call the focusing, zone focusing out of the way, one important area that you guys need to understand is that this film camera, you can basically put a filter on and if you shoot black and white, which I unfortunately do not do, you can add like yellow, red, or orange types of filter to like boost the contrast of your black and white photos. But you have to take note that the filter thread on this is 40.5 centimeters. I do not know why it's 40.5, but I highly, highly, highly suggest, I highly suggest adding a filter in front of this lens element. There's a big reason because most like film cameras such as the Konica C35 and most majority of Nikon lenses pancake lenses have a sort of like a flush lens element meaning that if you have a dust on your lens you can use a blower to blow it away however I do not know this is another engineering flaw that they did but because this lens itself does not have a what we call lens hood I guess the engineers made the lens itself concave or con con is it concave the right word but the lens there's a lens element itself and there's sort of like a small one centimeter like barrel like in between the front what I call filter thread and the lens element itself meaning that if there's some kind of dust or some kind of particles it can sort of sit in front of the lens element and in between this gap I'll stick in some kind of video as a confirmation or if that happens and you go out and shoot that dust particle or any kind of like what I call garbage not garbage but like trash or I don't know what you would call could damage the lens element because it's like constantly sitting in between the sort of, sort of like gapping hole so I would highly suggest putting a lens element in front of this what I call camera lens so it can you can prevent that from happening beforehand so yeah that's one area to point out in terms of loading film into this camera this is by far the easiest film camera to load film from my personal experience and because I do not shoot much with 35mm I have a Nikon F3 Konica C35 which in most cases when you install film on the left side uh, make sure that the way called left what I call how should I say winding part 
is locked into place, you basically stretch the film negative to the right side. And if you use a Nikon camera, if you use the Konica C35, you have to make sure that the bottom sprocket hole and the top sprocket hole catches on. And also you have to stick the tongue of the film negative inside the what you call the reel itself. And in most cases, if you don't do it properly, the film won't catch on to the other opposing side, the right side of the reel itself. And when you that fails, you basically think you're shooting a photo, but you're getting no images. You can this camera prevents that significantly. All you have to do is after you install the film in here, you stretch it to the right side. Make sure that the bottom white cross bracket hole is sort of like sort of like locked into place and just sort of like stretch it across the right side's white call reel and that's basically it and you close the lid and just shoot advance shoot advance and make sure that the top left white call like a portion of the how should i say the winding lever rotates if it rotates it means that you're fully uh how should i say it's like fully working and the correct manner. If this doesn't rotate, it's you're not properly installing the film. So this is really super easy to use. And also, if you're in a running gun situation, this is actually well, by far the fastest camera to like load film. So I this is a really enjoyable experience compared to using a Nikon F3, which takes a couple of like time to just load film. So yeah. Going back to the viewfinder itself, on the right there's these like LED lights. Like, I, I wasn't able to like shoot a video for you guys, but if you look in the user manual, it says like what kind of problems are indicated by the how the LED sort of like blinks. It kind of tells you that really beginner like errors such as you haven't like winded the film lever and you haven't advanced the film, so you can't shoot the photo, or the scenario is too dark, or maybe the lens cap is all attached so you can't take a photo. I mean, there's a lot of problems that you might face, and this, what we call the way it blinks, can tell you what kind of problems that you have. Probably you loaded the film incorrectly, etc., etc. So, yeah, please read the manual if you don't know, understand what the LEDs are indicating. That's basically sort of like my overview of the Pentax 17. Hopefully this video is not too long, but I gave my commitment to this video and because I'm eager to shoot with this camera, uh, I don't know when that video is going to come, but because it has, because I forgot to mention, you can shoot 72 exposures. That is chaos for me. That is a heart attack because I'm sh used to shooting only eight exposures. How, how long is it going to take to like shoot 72 photos but i'll try my best to like make that video come true to life so yeah big thanks to the engineers at pentax who thought well of this camera like i said there's a couple of areas they should really fix in the second if they ever make a second iteration of this camera i mean there are a lot of areas to improve and yeah high expectations and yeah it's great seeing a film camera to be arriving 30 years ever since the last film camera was sold in Japan. So yeah. And what and yeah. Did I miss anything? One geeky thing that I noticed was the bottom plate has a lot of screws at the bottom. There's like on the top left, top right, middle, there's like there's like three around the what you call the tripod mount and another one on the left and also two at the bottom left so this might be a super engineering i guess thing that they had to do but because there's like uh screws at the bottoms they probably thought that this is essential to make the camera in a sort of like a high durable like manner so yeah that's kind of neat seeing this yeah so yeah, that's basically it on my overview of my Pentax 17. So yeah, if you have any questions or any inquiries, I'm happy to reply. If you have any, uh, I guess, trouble, 
I'm not the guy that knows fully about the Pentax 17. You can shoot it out to me and I'll try my best to like give you my commitment and my replies. So yeah, as long as there's not many comments in the comment section below. So yeah, we'll see you next time. Peace out.